Welcome back to Luke Corrado Motor Services. Today I'm working on an old body style Chevrolet Suburban. 1997-ish. Uh, these are great trucks. This one has 214,000 miles on it. Uh, they've done quite a bit of maintenance to it, but they've been complaining that the steering is not great. Get it? I think that's the one I put the exhaust on. Uh, anyway, these guys have been doing some maintenance to this thing, but they're still not happy with how it uh, steers and handles. Basically, you're driving down the road, and you can get it to where you'll just shoot straight, but as soon as you touch the wheel, it's like digital driving. It doesn't really want to track its its proper way. So we're going to drive it, uh, see if I can hear anything, put it on the rack, shake it down, see what we see, and I'll show you some things or at least ways to uh, properly inspect this vehicle for uh, loose ball joints, tie rod ends, wheel bearings, all that stuff. Because that stuff wears out and you have to replace it. So that's what we do. Small block Chevy 350. Let's get this thing on the rack. So I'm going to go ahead and do a preliminary uh, alignment check. It's a pretty quick process. I do those sometimes when I'm chasing something. This truck has allegedly been into a couple alignment shops and it still doesn't steer correctly. It's definitely kind of wandery. It does some weird stuff. Uh, so we're going to do a preliminary check. I'm going to comp the heads, take a look, I'll do a printout. And then we'll put it up in the air, we'll shake it down for ball joints. Uh, basically, we're looking for looseness in the ball joints, the tie rod ends. Uh, we want to look at control arm bushings. This truck's 20 some years old, 97, so yeah, 25 years old. So we want to check bushings. Uh, you know, there's more to it than just a, one loose component at this age with 215,000 miles. So we're going to shake this thing down and see what we can find on it. This is one of those old guys that asks frame angle. So you gotta measure your frame angle so that it knows what your caster actually is. Let's do caster sweep. Uh, it's not horrible. Wheels off center, but the toes in. That's about it. Doesn't have a lot of caster on the passenger side. Okay, let's see where we're at. Wow, this was just aligned. So, there's a couple things going on here. Let's figure out what they all are. That's pretty sad if this was just aligned. So cross camber is uh, nearly a degree. Cross casters, four and a half degrees left, one degree right, and toe is towing out. So these trucks have an eccentric cam system on the upper control arms to adjust your caster and camber, and it is uh, very common for a mechanic to not get those tight enough, and they come loose. So we're going to check the. Uh, eccentric cams and see if any of those are loose first because this thing's a mess. <laughs> well, Bill, I got good news and bad news. I don't have any good news. Wow. Cross caster, you try to hatch within like one or two tenths. Not three degrees. It's 
no evidence of upper control arm eccentrics being loose. So with that, something is definitely wrong with this vehicle. Uh, let's put it up in the air. Uh, with a lower control arm torsion bar setup like this truck has to check your ball joints, you have to jack your front end up off the ground, your tires up off the ground, by the lower control arms. If you jack it up by the frame, your torsion bars put a load on it, which puts a load on the upper ball joint, the lower ball joint, and you will not be able to see if there's anything wrong with your ball joints. So you have to pick the vehicle up by the lower control arm to check your ball joints. Uh, you can check your tire out ends with it loaded, but it's best to just jack it up by the lower control arm. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and strip these heads off because there's something wrong. Maintenance. So it has a bad upper ball joint. So it has a new Pitman arm, new idler arm on it, so that's good. Let me grab a pry bar. I'm going to check tie rod ends and probably check the lower ball joints as well and then we'll talk to the customer see what they want us to do oh garbage so if you watch this tie rod end it's not real bad but it's it's gonna need rod ends you can see it's got some up and down play. It's not horrible, but I would re recommend replacing that one. The inner looks to have been replaced at some point. I usually just do them in pairs because with the miles that are on them, you know, you do it once and you're done. Uh, this upper looks pretty good. The lower doesn't actually appear to have any play in it. They might have been done already. Um, but I'm still going to recommend ball joints bushings because these bushings are all they're squished out and they're dry rotted real bad. The uppers come as a control arm so it already comes with new bushings and new ball joints so I'm going to recommend up, uh, sorry, upper control arms both sides. I'm going to recommend lower control arms or lower control arm bushings and ball joints. Um, and we'll recommend tie rod ends. Some of the other stuff's already been done. And then we'll recommend a proper alignment. Uh, but that ball joint is huffed. Checking your wheel bearings, you want to do up and down. And you, normally you can feel the wheel bearing play uh, if it has any. These are a hub style bearing. They're held together by the half shaft and the half shaft nut. Uh, tire rod ends, not horrible. Like you could get away with using them. Ideally we replace them. Lower ball joints when they're loose usually you can feel them move side to side or you'll be able to see a uh, see a rise and rise and fall in them when you lift them from under the under the vehicle. Um, so let's talk to Bill and see how safe he wants his wife to be in this because that ball joint's ready to pop. Scott knows all about those. Other than that, this truck's super clean underneath. It doesn't have a whole lot of rust under it. It's a pretty nice truck for 215k. You can see how the control arms 
pushing out the bushings over there. See, that one's pretty rotten. That one looks pretty good, actually. That one, not so much. Looks like we got a power steering. Oh, no, power steering pump was just changed. So a lot of this might be residual. Bill, I gotta hand it to you. This is a clean, old body style truck, man. Oop, got a little coolant leaking. Let's see where that's coming from. Heater core or heater hose, maybe. Oop, we got coolant there too. Water pump, maybe. And we'll figure that out while it's here. On all, pretty clean old truck. Other than the fact the ball joints are ready to fall off. Well, one. But we're going to replace them all. Because we want Vicky to be safe. Alright folks, quick break for merchandising announcement. Uh, for those of you who don't know already, we do actually sell merch now. Uh, our first design already went up. It is the original Church of Bad Decisions founding member shirt. Thank you very much for everybody who has already pre-ordered that shirt. Uh, very much appreciate that. It is live on our website right now, which is Lucor Auto dot my shopify dot com l u c o r e a u t o dot my shopify m y s h o p i f y dot com uh, and uh, you can pick up a pocketed t shirt normal t shirt as well as a zip up hoodie uh, all that are church of bad decisions it's got our lucor logo on the front and then it's got the church of bad decisions on the back uh, again thank you very much for everybody who has already pre ordered those shirts uh, we'll also use this as an opportunity to announce there is the second design ever of our uh, shirts that are on there as well. It is the I Support Bad Decisions shirt, um, which is actually going to go towards funding, supporting, and creating our ultimate bad decision, which is the Hellcat Swapped 1979 AMC AMX. Uh, many of you have seen my 1979 AMX. Uh, it's a great little vehicle. It's a fun car. Uh, we have three of them now, and one of them really needs to come back to life as a Hellcat-powered AMX. Um, a digital artist made a video, or made a made a rendering for one of these things a while back. Everybody said, hey, somebody needs to build one of these things, and well, there's nobody else that does 79 AMXs quite like we do, so uh, we're going to make this happen, and we're going to pitch this shirt as a way to help fund that, because it's going to cost a lot of money. And we're just a small-town shop around here, so... Um, all the profits that go from that shirt will go directly into making a Hellcat AMX happen. Um, that shirt is now live on our website as well. Um, same price as the other stuff, it's just a matter of we're going to direct all the profits from that thing specifically into making that horrible, horrible decision actually happen. So, um, very much appreciate all the support guys, thanks so much. Uh, it's still kind of weird for us to have merch and that everybody wants to wear our stuff, but uh, we really do appreciate it. And your spending money on that and your time spent on our videos is helping to fund a lot of the things that we're able to do with you know these kinds of projects as well as our own projects um, and it's you know it's making us able to have even better and bigger bad decisions so thanks guys we appreciate it back to working on uh, Miss Vicky's rig say the 20s do look good on this truck now you'll notice when it's in the air and it's not supported by the lower control arm it's tight you wouldn't know that it's loose because it's not being inspected correctly so you've, the coil springs that push on the lower control arms and the torsion bars that push on the lower control arms you have to jack the vehicle up by the lower control arm so that the rest of the system is unloaded Somebody, Who needs, knows? somebody needs a tune. Actually, they, they probably, probably paid for that. They probably paid for that. <laughs> yeah, this is well, 215k. It's in pretty good shape. The thing's super clean underneath. Yeah. 
Now I'll get it set up so we can take it apart. Looks like they just finished a fixed a power steering link because it's yeah. got a brand new pump in it. She's a bit leaky up there. I usually just put a seal in it because it's like a twenty dollar seal. And these pumps are like stupid reliable. So we'll pull the upper control arm off. We'll replace the upper control arm. Actually, I'm going to knock the lower ball joint loose because it's got pressure on it. And then I'll knock the upper ball joint loose. Then I'll replace the upper control arm. And then I'll remove the lower control arm, which requires special tools to remove the torsion bars because you have to pull the torsion bar out to get the lower control arm out. Um, this is a job that is very time consuming. And uh, if you don't have the right tools, good luck. <laughs> So, we'll get after it, get it done. Austin? How are you? Got a steering gear box around here for me somewhere? Somewhere. There's Mark back there working hard. Our fearless leader. That's, a, that's his I'm working hard yeah. pose. So, can I see this gearbox for a moment? You can. Heave! So, on these here gearboxes. Yes. On these here. These here. Is there a, is there a preload? screw that's on these things there is it's right there well, how, how, how do you mess with that as a customer well you're not supposed to because it's sealed with sealed oh stuff. really you break it that's always the warranty oh mm -hmm. so ah. you don't touch just because there's a screw no. there no doesn't you, mean you're supposed to turn it that's correct huh yeah should be a big warning sign yeah right big warning sign jam nut special stuff I suppose it's been tampered with. I'm not saying it was tampered with. No. Oh, I'm just sure. saying. Well, I know who worked on it last, so it's been tampered with. We'll see. Huh? We'll see. All right. Well, Mark saves the day again. We got everything else we need for that thing. At this point in time, let's just go ahead and rebuild the whole front of that truck, right? You know? Sway bar links, tie rod ends, ball joints, bushings. Just do it all. Most of it's all original stuff anyway, so it all needs to be fixed. And it's a nice day outside, so I decided to drive the AMX, which is, you know, awesome. I love this car. I really do. I really do. As long as it doesn't leave me stranded, I really love this car. All right, uh, got a business meeting on the way back to the shop, and we'll get back to work. So uh, see you in a bit. And one should have a bolt in it or a hole. Yep, it's got the hole in it for the sensor, for yeah. the sensor tab. Yeah, why would you bother doing the bolt? Oh, no. I mean, and you have to redo the alignment anyway because, I mean, when you take these up or out, these are what your right. what your alignment settings are, are done by. Normally, I would mark them and put them back in in the same place, but yeah. seeing as how it's off by three degrees plus of caster and a full degree of camber, yeah. they're not going to be, I'm just going to start over. What I'll what I'll do is I'll square them up dead center on all four, and then I'll get a baseline, and then I'll be able to tweak it from there. So, yippy skippy! Look at that. Yeah, I don't know why you'd even even bother busting that ball joint off there and doing it that way. Just buy a whole new control arm and put it in. Because it's cheaper and a whole lot less annoying. Well, it's. It's a lot easier to do a control arm. Zip that off, bang, 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 pull it yeah, out. You even brought me the driver's side. Good job. Yeah, look at that. All right. See you tomorrow. Hey, have a good night. So we're too late. Now I'm going to pop this off and I'll leave the rest for Junior so he can learn how to do this stuff. So I can learn him. One more hit. That guy's off. I gotta come off after. If you're wondering where this big ass punch came from, it's a uh, it's an output shaft from a transverse 4L 
4T60E from, I don't know, 20 years ago. Works really good as a long punch though. No, oh, it's still tight. <laughs> Two more bolts, the control arm's out. Well, I wish all the trucks I worked on were this clean. Like that just doesn't happen. Normally I'm fighting for an hour just with a, like one bolt. You don't have to pull a shock to do it up the control arm. A little loose. Put that in a scrap pile. Got our shiny new one. Holy cow, the knockouts have never been removed from this. Wow, I was not expecting that. So these trucks came from the factory with what were called knockouts. And you have to remove the knockouts to do the alignment to make the alignment correct, to make your cast room camera correct. I'll get a light and show you. So you can see the front one is slotted. The rear one is perforated, but it's only drilled, and it's drilled dead center. Same with the rear one. You can see it's drilled dead center, but it's perforated, and then the rear one is slotted. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these knockouts and that way I can make sure that my alignment is amazing when I'm done with this. I figure if we're doing all this work we might as well do it right. 200,000 miles of knockouts have never been done. All right. They actually used to have a tool for this but it's probably not in production anymore. Great. Man, you used to be able to just get them the right way and they'd pop right out. But... So, it is perforated. Well, no, it's not. It is. It's just not as perforated as I like them to be. So there's a couple different ways to do that. I'm going to keep after it with the impact, but I need to get my ears covered. I'll be right back. Cry driver at. This one's going to make me remove the shocks. I get it. I hear it. Hey, I got it. Finally came out. So now I'll use my carbide burr to clean that up because I made a mess of it. It's been a while since I've done these. I used to do this three or four times a week back when these were new. And I will say customers hated being told that they needed to pay extra money to get their cars aligned because GM decided to do this. Not my fault, I didn't do it. But you gotta pay me to do it for you. If you want, actually want your tires to wear well, grab a carbide real quick. Oh. 
And now my eccentric bolts can eccentric. Now I always put these back in with the nuts on the inside because it's easier for me to turn this one than it is to turn that one. Um, no, I don't do that on these. That's a different truck. I do it like this because I can put my impact on the nut on the outside on both. Forgot about that. It's been a long time since I've done a set of knockouts on a what was this? 90, sorry, 89? 88, I think, is when this body style came out. So 88 to 2000, they did this. But now my eccentric bolt will do its eccentric bolt. And as it moves in and out, that allows me to adjust my camber. And the one in the back allows me to adjust my caster. So... Beautiful. Now we can put our upper control arm back in on this side. Um, I'm going to leave the other upper control arm for Caleb to do in the morning because I want him to know how to do these. He will probably never have to do this in his time, but at least he will know that it's something that needs to be done. Uh, and I want him to know how to do the upper control arm, lower control arm. Tomorrow we'll do this lower control arm and the rest of the other side. So we'll get back at it. Now I can't actually put the knuckle on the upper control arm yet because Ooh, that guy's kind of loose. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, the knuckle has to drop down and out because the ball joint won't go past the half shaft. So I gotta knock the half shaft nut loose, knock the ball joint loose, and then the knuckle can come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang the caliper up on the car, disconnect our ABS sensor, and we'll just drop the knuckle down, uh, hang it on the rod end, although we're gonna replace that too. So I suppose I could just take that off and put it on the floor. Which is probably what will happen. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to clean up and go home and get some dinner. See you guys soon. So these are your torsion bars, and they are what are, it's effectively a straight coil spring. Instead of a coil spring pushing down, it's a really long rod that has torque on it, and that's what gives you your spring. So it's called a torsion bar, as opposed to a coil spring. It's just a linear spring instead of a coil spring. So these are installed, over here we have what's called the key. And the key is has pressure applied to it with this bolt, so you can change your ride height with this bolt by you can raise the truck by putting more pressure on it. You can lower the truck by reducing pressure. On it. That's all. So now you're going to take a tape measure. And now people and thousand dollars. Well, it's only going to lift it a little bit. And you're going to measure how far that bolt is sticking out of that plate, and how far this bolt is sticking out of this plate, and they are different amounts, so the ride height is probably incorrect on this. This one's kicked sideways, it's not incorrectly. 2016. So look at this one compared to that one. What's, what, what do you see wrong with it? This one's, this, one's at a, this one's at a crooked angle where this one's going straight to it. You see how this one's kicked out? Mm -hmm. So this one's installed incorrectly. 
Now, why it's installed incorrectly, I don't know. I don't know if somebody, I don't know if somebody did this before and they just put it back together wrong, or if it's been that way since this thing left the factory. I don't know. But since you have a measurement here and this one's incorrect, we're going to take this measurement, write it down somewhere so we don't forget it, and we'll, when we put this back together, we will set both of these to that uh, to that amount, and then we'll set ride height when we do the alignment. Okay. So this is a torsion bar unloader. It's a specialty tool. This one's a Kent Moore. I've had it for probably longer than you've been alive. I love hearing that. <laughs> and there's <laughs> this tool's older than you are. <laughs> so there's a arguably more useful. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a uh, there's a hole right here and there's a hole right here and that's where the nub in this goes. It goes in there and then there's a notch right here. In a different in a different spot than what the bolt goes in, and that's where you unload the torsion bar. Sorry, you load the torsion bar, get the bolt out. spring pressure on the control arm you can take your shock off and just go ahead and take the shocks off both sides take the uh, sway bar link off the other side as well am I just disconnecting it like this or fully out are we replacing them uh, they are actually not in bad shape so we're just going to reuse them okay. um, the, uh, you can take your lower control arm bolts out which I have the sockets and wrenches over here So that guy. Get an impact wrench. Work faster. That'll do. So now you can see I have, I don't have pressure on the key. So I should be able to slide this shaft forward. Thing on the other side. Go forward just a little more. Which is easier said than done sometimes. Are these? Is this the big metal pry bar thing that you had me use on the food truck? Yes, this is this is exactly what my big metal pry bar is. I was looking at the shape of the, the end on it. And I was like, that. Looks yeah, cool. I cut I cut one end off into a into a point, and it, yeah, that's my that's my big <laughs> ass pry bar. Okay. Yeah. Cut a spot of that.
these have a, uh, a flat in the shoulder which needs to line up facing the uh, torsion bar socket. So that wasn't too bad. I got my new bushings installed. These bushings do require to be indexed correctly on the torsion bar side. The other one goes in no matter what. Put a stake in it. Keeps it there. That part's done. Um, now the front ball joints, the front lower ball joints on these trucks are actually held in here. It's a pressed joint from the bottom up. And they use a uh, retaining compound. It's similar to the, I guess you could compare it to a, a sleeve sealing compound. When you put a sleeve into a block, you put a liquid sealant on it. It's like an epoxy or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you put that on there. So to release that, I actually heat this to release the bond of the bonding agent. And then uh, and then we knock it out with a ball joint press. So we'll, let me warm this thing up and we'll knock her out of there. Now we're cooking. This is going to make a heck of a mess. Probably start a fire. Popping a zit. Get the camera. I got the wall. <laughs> it's pretty gross. I got a little bit of everything over there. Yeah. Gross. Nobody said this was a clean job. Most of this is. Just straight filthy work. Retaining compound, that's what they call it. High strength, large cap, retaining compound. Made in the USA, Loctite. Go figure. This actually has a recess for the uh, grease fitting right towards the back here. Ah. And I'm actually going to use a press to put this in because it helps me do it a little smoother. Started. Right, I'll have to finish it on the actual press because I, I don't have a cup that'll work on this with this press. So over to the big press we go.
Ball joint installed. This arm is ready to go back in the truck. Well, we have a few alignments coming in in the morning tomorrow. And uh, I think we'll end this right here. Uh, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. We have shirts now. That's weird. Um, but hey, if you guys want shirts, we'll, we'll make shirts. We got to uh, put the driver's side of this truck back together in the morning. Miss Vicky will be happy to have this thing back. It's going to drive like a brand new truck. The passenger side eccentric knockouts were actually removed. So somebody did actually try to do a proper alignment on the passenger side. Even though the specs we pulled up when we first checked it were not anywhere near what they're supposed to be. I actually set these up a little bit out of spec. These call, if I remember correctly, these call for like two and a half degrees caster and like a half degree positive camber. So the tires are leaning out and I actually prefer like zero to a half degree negative camber, which is out of factory specification, but it drives better. It handles better and it actually uh, gets better tire wear that way. So I set them up the way I like instead of what the factory recommendation is on these trucks. Um, I have a few others that I do that too, but it is what it is. Uh, it'll drive really nice, a little extra caster. It'll drive like a Cadillac running down the road. Um, but I'm going to let uh, Caleb put this side back together. He got the other side taken apart, put back together today. Uh, I didn't get the chance to put the bushings in because I was doing a, what, a WRX Subaru alignment. And I uh, just got the bushings and ball joint done on this side. Caleb can put the rest of this back together tomorrow so that he can get used to doing some of this stuff. And uh, we'll set the ride height, do the alignments, and that might just be its own video. But, uh, yeah, making headway. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe. We appreciate all you people out there. Thanks for watching our bits. Have a safe night.